gosh darn it, Elimination Chamber. This is a podcast called Down the Hole. Woo! I'm Blaine. And you're another guy. And we are here in a hole. Yeah. You went to Professional Wrestling Talk, this episode uh, number 77B of Down in the Hole podcast. Yeah, it was a pretty busy weekend last weekend. Uh, I went to Elimination Chamber in Montreal Saturday night. Which is a pay-per-view event. Yeah, it was, oh my lord, man. How long does that last? That, it was like, I don't know, three and a half hours, almost four hours maybe. Jeez. Loudest crowd I have ever been a part of in my life for anything. I've heard that Montreal has just rabid fan interaction. The way, and, and I mean, like, their hometown boy was in the main event. Like, Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. Oh. These these freaking guys stood in the ring for, like, five minutes just doing like, nothing. They just did nothing. They literally stood there and stared at each other, and the crowd was going They just wouldn't bonkers. shut the fuck up. No. Like, they were, like, before the even the pre-show started, like, they were getting everybody set up to do, like, their pre-show down below. And there was a, a fuck you Roman chant. <laughs> <laughs> going in the arena and there was like nobody in there That's like you funny. look around at the seats actually i got a video of it it's right here and like if you see it it's yeah. like there's barely anybody there but it's still loud wow. and if you want to hear what the crowd was like with roman and sammy check and this out and make sure you turn it up shit like it was unreal like i had goosebumps like Fuck looking around you, roman and that whole place the was doing whole it. place <laughs> that's so funny man. it was insane uh, that's exactly what they want though yeah it was honestly like and then it elevates the it elevates the athletes in the match yeah because the crowd is insane oh there were some great matches two elimination chamber matches like the men's chamber match was freaking on real. Okay, so how does an elimination chamber work? It's, I've seen they have like a the the apron, they have the floor jacked up. Yeah. And there's a cell in each corner. There's yeah, there's a pod and there's basically there's six people in the match. They have done it with tag teams before, but it's six people in the match, two of them start, the other four are in the pods. They're locked up. And then I don't know, they they change the timer, but when it, each there's a certain amount of time and after that time one comes out after the other. So it's kind of like a Royal Rumble. Kind of. It's like a Royal Rumble in a Hell in a Cell. It's pretty freaking cool. And it's it's one versus, like, you're just free-for-all. Yeah. There's no teams. It's just, and it's just elimination. Like, it's, you got to right. pin a guy, get him out. How do you, oh, it's by pin. Pin, submit. submit. Yeah. Yeah, like regular rules. But, like, but also not First because cause you're in ditch the elimination chamber is so it like, a, it's a it's caged in yeah so yeah. Man, is there a roof on it yeah so montez ford my guy climbs up to the top of the, he's hanging on from the top of the chamber this thing's pretty big yeah and he pulls himself up and just falls on everybody from the top of the chamber right down it was just like your heart so sank he, watching it it was so crazy he had to 
climb up a wall and then like kind of crawl across like the top and then, like <laughs> it was because you can't get over it no there's a roof on it yeah Gee, that's crazy that it, stuff's nuts man. who came the, up with that the triple h oh okay first time it was ever used was survivor series 2002 oh so it's been around a while mm-hmm. elimination but they didn't give it its own pay-per-view until like I don't remember what it was. So an Elimination Chamber match is reserved now for a pay-per-view. Now, yeah. They, they, there might come a day, like, they they used to have a pay-per-view event for Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Which kind of takes away some of the luster and mystique, I guess, of the cell itself. Why? Well, because usually you save that, like, if a feud was really hot. And like oh, you had a couple of a couple of guys or a couple of gals that were really hating on each other. Right. The hell in the cell was like that. That's the blow off. Like that's we're gonna end this and we're gonna end it right. But if you, yeah, if you have a paper, like you just when you expect it at the same time every year, like it doesn't, it loses its luster. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they almost need to, to they need to set up a rivalry and bring it to the boiling point yeah, and, like, then, okay, and you then you are in the cell like, yeah and fuck. and then you you don't have a choice but to be in the cell to have this battle otherwise like it's just people are going to be in the cell and they're like, just picking it, two people to fight in the cell and it, which doesn't mean like when you look back like undertaker and Shawn michaels like when kane debuted in that cell like that was Bonkers. Okay. Um, is that what his debut was in the hell? In the yeah, he ripped the freaking door off the off the cage. Like oh, that shit. was Kane's debut. Nobody had ever seen him before. No. No way. They, he had been talked about for months and months, but yeah, nobody had seen him. And then, yeah. yeah, red lights hit, and it was <laughs> sick. Cool. Um, you've got Triple H and Cactus Jack. Um, I mean, uh, the obvious hell in a cell would be Triple H, or not Triple H, sorry, Mankind and The Undertaker. Yeah. Everybody so knows. So Cactus Jack McFoley again, was in there with Triple H. Yeah. And I know. I honestly thought that that, K, that hell in a cell match was better than his one against The Undertaker. The Undertaker one was known for two things. The yeah. fall off the top of the cage and the fall, and the fall through. through the cage. That yeah. was what that match was known for. It was known for he almost, he should have been killed in yeah. that match. Yeah, that second fall. Yeah, that second fall, and he ended up with like a piece of tooth, like in his nose. nose. Yeah, Taker has said too. I've heard him on like YouTube shows and stuff. Where Undertaker said he thought he was fucking dead. He he didn't want that second one. They weren't in control of that. The first one, he's like, "Fuck you, I'm going." Yeah, Undertaker didn't want to throw him. Make it look like you're holding me, Mark. Is his name Mark Calloway? Yeah, because if you actually watch it back. It's not a hard toss. It's not even really, he's it's, not even really touching him. It was like, he just kind of like guided him to it. Because you don't want to throw off his, you, you have to trust Mick is going to throw himself, you don't want to throw him off. Yeah. You want him to land where he wants to land, because if you fuck him up, he's going to die. Yeah. And then, yeah, the other one where they, they weren't even supposed to be standing on top of the thing, and fucking, what, 500, 600 pounds of dudes up there, the thing breaks, and he falls on his fucking head. Well, it doesn't, yeah, and it also doesn't help that, like, that, the roof of the cage is fucking kept together by zip ties. It's a chain-link fence. It's just Zap straps. nothing like straps, yeah. There's, yeah, there's nothing, like, metal connect, <clears throat> sorry, connecting those pieces of the roof together. If you actually, like, watch the match. They're falling through it. Every step they take, like, you can see the zip ties snapping and flying off. Yeah. Like, it's not, it was not safe whatsoever. Well, it wasn't but that, meant to be walked on. No. They no. were supposed to be up there. And it's, it's, they get up there, but, like, they don't have a plan. Like, how the hell are we supposed to get down? Yeah. We don't have a plan for this. Yeah. So getting down is, well, Mick Foley figured it out twice. So it's like the elimination chamber was kind of like a, kind of like an extension of that, uh, and an evolution, I guess, of so, the, the cell. With you saying that it's nice when there's a huge feud and they want to put it into a cell match to deal with it. Yeah. Are they doing that with the chamber or is it just six random people? The again? chamber is more or less the, the way it it looks to be now, the way because they've got multiple championship belts on multiple brands. So it's like they've, they're, you've got the Royal Rumble, the winner of the Royal Rumble gets the championship match at WrestleMania. The elimination okay. chamber seems like it's, it's kind of like the pay-per-view for like the mid card titles or the second, you know, the second level titles. Um, What's up for grabs in the chamber? This for this year, then the women's match, it was a, uh, 
basically it was a chance to to face I think it was Bianca Belair at WrestleMania, one of the women's champions. So kind of like a Royal Rumble in that sense. So it's for a belt. The, the chance, chance to fight for a belt. And then the men's one was for the United States Championship. Oh, okay. So it was for like it was for a mid card. So some straps are on the line, bro. The, the cool thing is, is that like are going to be a lot. They're you, you. They're they're bringing up the lower card titles. Mm-hmm. Like you know, a few years ago, like they didn't matter. Nobody cared. Nobody could even probably name half of them. But now, like that was that United States Championship match was a main focal point in that pay per view. <laughs> It's looking like one of the nights of WrestleMania, it's going to be a tag team match headlining, which has never happened. Oh, really? Yeah. They've never had a tag belt on the line at WrestleMania? No, not headlining. Yeah. Not your main event. Main event, last fight of the night. But this is going to be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos. Because, like, Vince McMahon never wanted to book tag teams. Personally, I don't think he... He didn't want... Well, he he didn't want to pay four guys. Oh, okay. Basically, you could have a one on match, a one on one match, sorry. He'd only have to pay two guys. You put on a tag team match, he's got to pay four guys now. Yeah. He didn't like doing that. Tag team matches are so good, though, man. I know. But so, like, now the Triple H is in charge of creative. It's like there's actually a focus being put on those guys yeah. and those girls. So it's it's nice to see. But, yeah, so the Elimination Chamber was sick. The drive to Montreal to the Bell Center, at least coming from, like, the west going east, was the easiest drive ever, man. You're just you're on the 401. And then, and then you're in Quebec, and you make—I swear—you make a left-hand turn and a right-hand turn, and you're freaking at the arena. Oh, like, cool! It was the easiest drive. Yeah, no, been there. Very polite people. Like I've been in some wrestling crowds, and there's been some douchebags around, but like, I everybody's think, there to have a good time. And everybody was there for Sammy. Nice. It was like every everybody was just you know they were all. And he's a Quebecer. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. And he's not going to beat Roman. No, but but man. <laughs> <laughs> but man, they gave you the feeling that there's a chance. Yeah, that's you fact. knew it's not going to happen. But there was parts in that match where you're like, maybe they're going to do it. Can. Maybe it's possible. Because like, you're thinking about it too. The guy's in his hometown. What better spot for him to take it? Oh, the, like the pop would have been astronomical. Oh man, here's the thing. The pop, like the pops, were astronomical all night. Like I said, like from beginning to end, the crowd was just bumping until Roman pinned Sammy, and I swear it was like all the oxygen oxygen got sucked right out of the arena. So one, two, three, Sammy mm. loses. Ugh. Silence. Dead. It was amazing. I bet tri- like <laughs> Triple H is probably sitting in the back behind that curtain going, wow. Yeah. Look well, what we just that, did to 18,000 yeah, people. It that's... was incredible. Mission accomplished. But like you Deflated knew. Deflated that fucking place. Like, yeah, you knew Roman was going to win. But at, the, but at the same time, they really did a good job at making you think there's like a 2% chance that maybe Sammy could do it. Yeah. And the thing that, oh, and what did it? I swear to God, I, Roman Reigns is the best in history at the 2.99 kickout. <laughs> Like better than anybody. Like Two. he, those near falls, like, <gasps> like the yeah. gasping in that arena. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, because you think he's gonna hit for three. Yeah, and he's not even moving at the last second. <laughs> I'd like shoulder up. Just yeah, it's I've never Two. seen anybody, and like we're, we watch all the time, and I'm always saying to Rage like, this freaking guy. Yeah. His like his kickouts on two point nine are just the greatest thing ever because you believe it. Like you're like sucked right in and you're like, oh my god, and then he fucking squirms out of it. He's so good. Every fucking time. He's so good. <laughs> so when's how long has he had the the big belt? Oh over two years now. Almost nine hundred days. Cause he's been like the guy. Yeah. But there's See, I wonder why See when when Undertaker lost the belt at WrestleMania. Because he'd never lost a belt at WrestleMania. Well, he's the his streak was he never lost at WrestleMania. Period. Yeah. And then friggin' Brock beat him. I wonder why that wasn't Roman. Did Brock need the belt? Brock didn't need anything. I don't even know. I don't know if the belt was on the line for that one. But Roman versus Undertaker. Because I remember watching Undertaker in an interview talk about that and how he thought it should have been Roman. Because Brock didn't. Leave. Yeah, yeah, that that to beat the streak at WrestleMania. Yeah, he's like if any, like the streak has to be broken. 
It should, well, who's going to take it? it should, he it, said Brock didn't need that. He did. Roman, Roman did. He should have. And Roman did end up beating him at WrestleMania. But, like, the problem is, like, the match was shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, and, like, Undertaker, like, left his gear in the ring. Like, that was his retirement. He was saying goodbye. And then he watched the match back and was like, nope. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> end like that. Nice. You know? Oh, so he came back after he mm -hmm. apparently retired. He didn't want to end on a bad note. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially for the career that that guy's had. Mm -hmm. Has there only ever been one Undertaker? Has Mark he, Calloway. He's the only guy. Well, <laughs> 1994? Was it 94? I want to say it was 94. Yeah. Because Undertaker wrestled Yokozuna at the Royal Rumble. Rest in peace, Yoko. Uh, yes, rest in peace. Um, and then he... I think he was like healing up from some injuries and stuff, so he took some time off. Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, yeah, brought back the Undertaker. Oh God! But it was like fake Undertaker. Yeah. So then at SummerSlam '94, the real Undertaker <laughs> wrestled the fake Undertaker. Oh, <laughs> sounds. I know it's cheesy and corny as shit, but it was. I mean, it was. Who awesome. was the fake guy? Just a look alike. I got, yeah. Well, kind of look alike. But yeah, it was uh, a kind of like. But that, really try it. But other than other than was that, it purple tie Undertaker was it? That was a red purple tie Undertaker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mark Calloway has always been the Undertaker. There was hmm. just a fake fake Taker there for that That's little bit. That was really hilarious. funny. Good times. So you did the Elimination Chamber pay per view, and then you did like the next day or two later, you you did Raw. Yeah, I took my son, my eight year old, to go and see Raw live. And it was frig, it was awesome. It was in, just in Toronto. Ottawa. Oh, Ottawa. Yeah, we took the scenic route, took Highway 15. That's way better. It is way better. It's shorter, nicer drive, doesn't it, feel yeah. as long. They're like, oh, it's faster to go this way. I'm like, no, it's not. No, nah, 401, <laughs> if you actually look it up, the 401 way is like an extra 45 kilometers, and it takes you like around. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're, you're not... Yeah, like if Ottawa, like if you're, you know, Ottawa's here and Kingston's here, you're going kind of past and back. Yeah, and let me tell you, I'm, but they're they're looking at oh the speeds are faster. I'm like yeah, but doesn't do matter. you really want to drive 125 kilometers an hour all day? Like just go for a drive of 15. No, but it's about the same time, and that's sticking to the normal speed limits. Like when you're on 15, um, yeah. So why not just go slower yeah. and get there in the same. And the thing time. is, on a Monday night. There's no freaking traffic. No. Like, I didn't have anybody in front of me on the way to there until we got to, like, Carlton Place. Yeah. And then on the way home, like, once we got out of, like, Canada, there was it was just a nice, clear drive on the way home. Like, there was... So, was there any, like, repeat? Because you, you saw the pay-per-view in Montreal two days prior. Yeah. So, all those people are here. A lot of them were, yeah. So, who showed up at Raw? Oh, the first person that showed up was Sami Zayn. Right, and it was so cool because, like, my little guy, he was just he was loving it. Oh, he's a Sammy fan. Eh? He's Sammy, and he loves Kevin Owens. So then, okay. like, Sammy Zayn calls out Kevin Owens. Okay, so, oh. K so KO comes out, <laughs> nice. and like, I got this picture of my kid. Check this out. The look on his face, priceless. Yeah, both yeah. of his guys. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was just he had so much fun, like just just soaking it all in the big arena. You know, yeah. you got the big stage set up with the screen and all the pyro. And, oh hell yeah. Like for an yeah, you hear those firecrackers popping inside a building. Oh, he loved ca it. Ca 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 ca. I just, you know what? I figured for an eight-year-old, like this would be something he'll, he'll remember for the rest of his life. Yeah, it was like he couldn't. He loved the fact that like we were at a lot, like it was live on TV right then and there. Yeah, yeah. If he wore like a bright yellow shirt, well, you guys were probably where were you? Oh, we were in the third deck. But it was <laughs> okay. But uh, man, it, yeah, thirty-six bucks a ticket. Yeah, it was, why not? It, it, I mean, and we saw fine, like everything. Everything's there. fine, yeah. And they got the jumbotrons and stuff, so you yeah. can see the zoom in and the, or the you can see the the TV feed. Yeah, and I bought Rowan a little uh, Cody Rhodes t shirt. Oh, he's cool! A, he's a big big fan of the roller coaster. You can't be you can't beat the Rhodes family. No, and oh, it was great, man. Like it's like him and I had a moment. Okay. When Cody came out. Yeah. Because like that's cool. Cody's my guy too. Okay. So it was just like Roman and I both had a moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> look who it is, buddy. Like, it's our guy. <laughs> and he's here. And was Cody at the chamber match? No. Oh. No. He was not there. He's not in the pay-per-view. No. 
he didn't they he didn't need to be. Yeah. Okay. You had uh like the women's chamber match, the men's chamber match, uh Roman versus Sammy, uh Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lash, let me tell you. Wow. Two two beefy boys slapping man beef right there. Yeah. Just two big monsters chucking each other around. I loved it. It was such a Bobby sick match. Lashley and fucking Brock Lesnar. Holy shit. Yeah. It those was, two di- those two guys look like they're fucking cut at a marble, but together they probably weigh six hundred and fifty yeah, pounds. It was, man, What's it was, their combined weight? You think? If I'm just guessing, they got to be three hundred pounds a piece. Yeah, it's got to be around six five fifty six hundred pounds for sure. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, because Bobby's a monster. People. No, Bobby's yeah. a monster too. Yeah, if anybody can stand beside Lesnar and, and not look small, it would be Lashley. man. I, I'll tell you, like in person, even from like higher up, like. Brock is a beast, man. Yeah, like that man is lo- like it's one large man right there. <laughs> That's yeah, he's cool too. He's got like a cool looking style. The older he gets, it, it basically like if you look up the looks dash- like a fucking Viking man. If you look up man or men <laughs> in the dictionary, <laughs> the picture is fucking Brock Lesnar. <laughs> like he's like there isn't even a written definition. It's just a picture a of Brock. A picture of Brock Lesnar and probably one of those like um, it's probably holding up like a fifteen pound steak and like three axes in his <laughs> other hand yeah. like it'd be like one of those dudes from like the highland games or something that chucks boulders around for a living man he's like a freaking he's a rancher in canada i don't know if it's like i can't remember if it's like saskatchewan or alberta Some, somewhere he has like a ranch and like that's that's wow. what he does cool like he doesn't he's canadian he's not canadian no he's no but here. well it's because we're the best man yeah why why not right if you need land saskatchewan's got some it's got a little bit Little bell, a couple of acres. Yeah, probably more like hectares, <laughs> or whatever is bigger than a hectare. Yeah, man. So there you go. So yeah, solid weekend. Yeah, Raw was good. Lita, Le- she's still Lita, kicking it. Right? Lita showed up at Raw, man. Yeah, I was cool. like, no way. That's awesome. And uh, oh, yeah, I'll get to. It's a shame what happened to like Jeff Hardy and stuff over at AEW because it would have been cool. No, oh, if. Yeah. Um, if Some news about that just came out. Tony Khan could have got Lita back in there to the. Um, ah, there's too much history there, buddy. What do they? What the fuck were they called? All three of them. Uh, just, uh, Team Extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. To get Team Extreme back together again with Lita being part of that, but it's like with the Hardys being up and down with the stuff, and well, and with the history between Lita and Matt Hardy. Oh, is there? Oh yeah, they, blood there. Well, they dated, and then she cheated on him with Edge. Oh shit! This yeah, that been back be. in like late two thousands. <laughs> Fuck. So there's some, and like that's like, yeah. like not story. I mean, they ended up bringing it into a storyline, but it didn't start out that way. No. Yeah, that's a whole other show. You know, sometimes in, in wrestling terms, some people will work themselves into a shoot, and in the odd case, it works backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes for some pretty interesting television, I'll tell you. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, this bloodline storyline. It's like, like both the kids are into it. Like even my daughter's been, oh, been really? watching. It. Yeah, she's been getting into it too. It's like it's this bloodline storyline deserves an Emmy. What? As far as I'm concerned, that's the Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman, the Usos. Like if you, oh, bloodline is like his. Career. That's, that's like that they're himself? yeah. And like it, this storyline deserves an Emmy, bro. <laughs> it's, it's it's been going it, on for a while, then. Eh? It's good. Like I'm telling for all of us in our place. As soon as a bloodline promo starts on TV, we yeah. all sit down, shut up, and yeah, it's like we focus. It's like that soap opera. You just got to be on it. Yeah. Like what's happening this week? And yeah. next uh, next week on Bloodline Saga. Yeah, which I'm fine. Like it's so good. Yeah. And, like Roman Reigns is so good right now. Was and, Sammy in the blood? Was Sammy in the bloodline? Well, he like worked his way. Like there was a whole storyline. He like had to prove himself and work his way into it. And like you know, they've got the USO. So like Sammy Zayn was like the honorary US. Okay. Because I, I, that's like I don't. That's like how the the Samoans. That's how they say bro. Oh, okay. Oose. Okay. You know, like that's that's bro to them. Okay. So he was like the honorary ooze. And like it was a whole and Sami Zayn's really good with like his facial expressions and conveying remember... emotion. Like he really you like there are some promos that like yeah. it looked like he's gonna cry. Yeah, but you and like I don't know, there's certain actors to me that I feel that. Mm-hmm. 
There's certain ones I don't. I can laugh, but there's certain ones that like I can feel what's in their eyes. He's right really now. good at doing it. And yeah, because I saw some promo that they were doing in the ring, and it was like he wanted to be whatever. Like they all got new shirts. Or yeah. Something. And he still had the old shirt. Yeah, when then that's when they gave well, him the honor. Off when he rips it off of him, and he like looks really beat, and then he's about ready to leave, and, and then they throw him a brand new one, and he's back in again. Yeah, which was like, the honorary no. Ooze shirt. Right. That was like so. It was a whole and like man. It's but just... then now, obviously, the tables have turned again because he's fighting the guy at, for a belt match now. And but now you've got they're working this whole because Cody and Roman Reigns are going at WrestleMania. That's just that's in stone for a fact but now you've got Sami Zayn and kevin owens which are actually like best buds from like they grew up in this business together like oh, cool so they had like they're like best friends so now they get to come back around and their story's coming full circle and they're coming back as a team but they're also trying to like destroy the bloodline at the same time so it's like a bunch of different things going on at the same time that'll be from what I've, I've heard you talk about the bloodline storyline it's so yeah, good and how strong it is and all this stuff making like having that alliance crumble is going to be amazing that and that's like who can get in there as the mole and tear it apart from the and that's side? what they're trying to do but like so far like no one's been able to get to roman and it's Freaking glorious, man! Cool. It's like the man, fall of that is going to be amazing. I know. How are they going to fucking pull that? Oh, out? I don't know, Trip. But Triple H knows what he's doing. Yeah, and they can't fuck that up. It can't just be a one show. Holy shit! It's going to be pick, 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 pick. Yeah. Pick. And then it's going to blow up at WrestleMania, and something psychotic is going to happen. It's. I, I can't wait. It's going to be two fun nights of wrestling. You get at the like beginning the of rock, April. The Rock comes back. <laughs> I don't. God, there's so much. He's he said no, and I who knows what's going on with him. Yeah, I've got it. They don't do they need him. I've got what day it doesn't is it? Sound like it? My whole thing is at the end of the WrestleMania match between Cody and Roman, you have Cody win that belt and complete his story arc. You know, winning the championship that oh, Dusty saying, never did. So you're saying Cody at or Cody at the Royal Rumble won. Yeah. Earns his right to fight Roman for a belt at WrestleMania. Yeah, so could you see, could you imagine them taking the belt off of Roman at the chamber and putting it on Sami Zayn? Like, Sami Zayn versus Cody Rhodes is, sorry, that's not a headlining WrestleMania match to me. No. Not when you want to sell 80,000 tickets. Roman and Cody? Hell yeah. But what you do is you have Cody win, then you have The Rock strut out to the ring. Hey, Roman. The I'm the head of this table. Yeah. <laughs> I am the tribal chief. Yeah, yeah. And then you set up a match, Roman versus Rock, WrestleMania 40, and you got a year to build that shit. And the thing is, Roman doesn't need the belt. If you're booking a story between him and The Rock, you don't need the belt anywhere near him. So why bring The Rock in? Just because he's like from Hawaii and all that kind of shit? Oh, well, just money. He's going to bring yeah. eyes, ratings. Yeah. But you want, if you want it, because everybody knows that Roman, the Uso, like everybody knows their family. Like, The yeah. Rock is family. Like, they're related. Yeah. Everybody, everybody that's with a brain. I, that's why I mentioned The Rock, because I'm yeah. like, it's, there's got to be a link to The Rock there, because you're going he after is the, the link. Whole, he the, is the like, Samoan thing. He is, like, their link. Like, he's, like, Roman's connected to the Usos. He's connected to, to Roman. He's connected to uh, Tamina, who's another uh, female wrestler. Like, he's, con that his, the Anoi family is, like, uh, Yokozuna. Oh, yeah? He's part of the family. Yeah, like, it's huge. So when they say bloodline, they're talking they're actual they're, blood. Yes. That's oh. what's also making this whole thing interesting. And The Rock is re actually related yes. to Roman Reigns? Yes. So you have Cody. How? I don't know. Like they're cousins yeah, or some shit? Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. I didn't know that. So you have Cody win the belt at Mania. Okay. And then he can go off and he can have a, a – he can go against you know Randy Orton. He can do whatever. But then like you can start this hardcore tribal chief bloodline story oh between Roman God, Reigns dude. and The Rock. That would be fucking crazy. Yeah. No, oh, crazy everybody, if The Rock comes back because everybody, and actually does a run. The, the Rock is the most famous man in the fucking world right now. Yeah. So everyone is obviously going to think, well, Roman's not 
really the head of the table. Like it's technically Dwayne. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh. what a better it's story. Like, of anarchy. like <laughs> if they build that right, like it will trump Hogan Andre. If they can do it oh, right. Oh fuck yeah, dude. Oh wow, that'd be wild. But that's my that's my fantasy booking theory for WrestleMania. I so don't want would... to yeah. I don't want to see The Rock at all until no. the end of Cody and Roman, and I want The Rock to come if out. You're so blah, 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 like because that, Roman's the heel, right? Imagine the fucking people in that place if they hear that yeah. theme song. And especially because you're already booking Roman and he as comes the out heel. With his fucking Adidas track pants, and it's just like <laughs> fucking sniffing the wind and shit. <laughs> you smell what he's cooking? Yeah. Yeah, that Imagine table. Imagine that. Holy fuck, dude. That table that you're the head of? That's my table. Mm-hmm. And like that's it. That's all you need to do. The Rock. show ends, yeah. and then uh, then everyone's all like, "Well, Frig, is it WrestleMania next year yet? Like, yeah, yeah. you can do it. Like, I mean, they built a year long storyline twice between John Cena and The Rock. Why can't you do it between Roman and The Rock? And that would actually mean something. Yeah, that'd be wild. Yeah, man. Like The Rock has been gone for a little while, but The Rock is back. <laughs> You're at The Rock's table. You know all that shit. Say what you want about wrestling. The stories in wrestling right now are probably trumping the soap operas you're watching in the afternoons on yeah. TV right now. I'm sorry, but your guiding light and Young and the Restless aren't <laughs> topping the bloodline right now. See, I wonder. I wonder with The Rock too. You'd need him to come back full time. No, 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 no. You don't want that. No, he wouldn't. Well, he couldn't do it. And he, he makes like. 20, 30 million dollars in movies. That's what I mean. How would they get him to be? They just have to have, they just pepper him in. Well, you have Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman cut promos on him all the time. He doesn't have to be there. Yeah. He only has to show show up up a couple times. Yeah. Keep, keep the interest. And then at WrestleMania, he's in a match. Yeah. And then obviously practicing with behind the scenes with Roman and building the match out. Yeah. Cause I mean, here's the thing you look at The Rock and you're like, there's nobody in the world who's in better shape than The Rock. Like, However, yeah, you can't say he's he's lost it. I mean, ring shape. That's it. Ring being ring ready is totally different because, yeah. like, your your body calluses for the bumps, right? Like yeah. hitting the ropes, taking your back bumps, like you're sliding across that fucking mat, all that shit. Your body gets calloused up and gets used to it. And there's a muscle memory working a ring. Yeah, where he, I mean, he was so good for so long, but yeah, there is going to be a little bit of rust. It'll be interesting. Yeah, but again, if you're doing if you're doing full impact practices and stuff, I think you'd be all right. Yeah. And then once you get out of WrestleMania, it's all coming back. And and it's a, at that point, it's adrenaline. You're just feeding yeah. off the crowd at that and, point. And all, and he's so used to that anyway. Yeah. Like being you know the heel and all the shit that he did so well, like it'll yeah. all come back. It'll all be numb. Yes, sir. Well, shit. Yeah, buddies. When we talk about wrestling. Frig, we can talk about. I can Ross. ask you. I love how I can ask you anything. And I'm an such answer. a nerd. I'm sorry. No, it's great. I'm such a nerd. See, and I can't watch it. Like I, I watch. Oh, what dude, I, can. I watch it every day. Um, like I'll watch. Yeah. Like when I go to bed, I, you know, 1990 Royal Rumble, 19, you know, 93 SummerSlam. Like I, I'll yeah. just all the time. I'm watching old shit. Billy Kidman versus the Hurricane. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just making up names. Those are two legit names, though. They are real. D- different companies. Yes. Are they? Well, they yeah. were. Kidman was in WCW. Yeah. But, yeah, even the thing, like, yeah, just, just, and you have the app where you can pull up anything you want, and, like, yeah. I guess he did show up in WWE at one point for a little bit. Did he? Yeah. A lot of them did. Who cares? They wanted money. After Vince bought <laughs> WCW, they needed, yeah. they needed checks. If you need money, go get it. Yep. That's it. Work for it. Man. Don't be a bitch. Another solid episode on wrestling. Oh, yeah. Wrestling zone. That's how we roll. Down in a hole is what we do. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Blaine and Jono, and thanks for watching. 32 minutes. That's a while. That's a, that's a good video. That's a good video. Three, All right. three mini videos because i got to stop it every 11 and a half. Yeah, it is what it is. As always, thanks for watching. Sayonara. Tune in next time. Bye, everybody. More stuff. So I can't.